Hello, this is Mark from IMNG Organic, and welcome to part 8 of Back to Eden versus Fall Leaves. Again, this is our second fail. Our first fail was potatoes, and now this is our second fail with our zucchini and squash. And that's located right in front of me. We have 15 zucchini and 15 golden squash. About three weeks ago, I was out here doing another video, and everything was looking fantastic. Now, things have changed dramatically since then. The plants have gotten weaker, and now it's, uh, they're allowing the uh, bad insects, like the squash bugs, to be able to lay their eggs on them, and they can't fight them off, and they're gonna be probably hatching soon and causing more devastation to the plant. The plants are turning yellow, now you can see how many eggs have been deposited on the leaves already. Here's some right here. By my, I'll point to it by my finger, by my thumb. And there's some more here. By my thumb. Also here. And in the back. Right by my thumb. I'm going to take a slow walk up the row and you can see that the plants are very compact, not a dark green by any means, more on the pale side. They are producing, we do have some nice zucchini and some nice squash, but you can see majority of them are just, I'm going to say dwarf are not growing. Now here's a perfect example of how it's not doing anything probably in the last three weeks. Now you can see here in our golden squash that it's producing but very little but the plants are small And this goes right down the line to the very end. Very tiny, even gets smaller towards the end of the row. And the reason I'm calling it a fail in the back to Eden, because this is the same variety that was planted in the same date, received the same type of weather. And you can see here, this is the golden squash, how beautifully it's doing. Nice, large foliage. Several golden squashes on there. Beautiful, healthy, large blossoms. Very little eggs on there. And it seems like it's doing 200% better. Now we're looking up the row and you can see how beautiful and uniform that row is of the golden squash. And again, it received the same amount of rainfall, the same temperatures and the same everything, same planting date and it's the same variety as the other one. Uh, you can see how beautiful they're, they're doing in the leaf mold. This might be a better angle to see because the sun's at my back right now. But you can see how strong the plants are in this row of the golden squash. Now I'm starting looking at the zucchini, which is also again very large plants. Lots of leaves, lots of large leaves, lots of flowers, and it's just overall just a very healthy plant. I'm at the far end of the row looking upwards and you can see how crowded it is in here with the cover crop of field peas. That's the, it's not weeds on the ground, that's field peas. The uh, peas have set uh, their ways in their pods and actually are starting to dry up now. Uh, the field peas plant itself is still staying green, but you can see how crowded it is with the sunflowers and the field peas, and everything is doing very nicely in the leaf mold. Also, too, going very badly is my cucumbers. You can see they're not even trellising. They're pretty much staying on the dwarf side also. Also having the same problem in the spaghetti squash. You can see here that the plants are dwarfed. They, the vine should be at least 10 feet long by now. It is producing, and it does have blossoms on it, but I don't think it's gonna get any much stronger than what it is right now. Here we have our butternut squash. Again, the same type of problem is happening. Short, dwarf plants. The vine should be at least three times longer than what it is now. 
and again not looking healthy enough to maybe possibly survive another month so how do we determine what's going wrong and how do we fix it okay let's look at the basic facts right here we have again both types of plants planted in two different areas one in the wood chips one in leaf mold they're all the same types of plants and they're also the same variety so it's not the seed difference or anything else too the weather they're less than 50 feet apart amount of sunshine amount of rain amount of heat amount of humidity same now you might be asking pale plants not enough nitrogen those wood chips are sucking up all that nitrogen in the soil other channels have debunked this it's not true there's not enough problems or situations where that wood chips is going to be taking nitrogen out of the soil away from plants you might be saying there's lack of nutrients in the soil both sides have the same type of soil both sides receive the same type of cover crop planting to this area nothing was planted in this area for two years and just beautiful cover crops have grown here reaching anywhere from three to four feet tall so the nutrient surplus in the soil is at its maximum effort to feed these plants I dug up a golden squash on the right hand side from the leaf mold and brought it over and that's in front of the shovel here it's on your right hand side and the back to Eden one that's in the wood chips is on your left hand side I just want to show you the comparison of the size it's much bigger uh, when the leaves don't move well when you try to pick it up out of the ground they're very soft stems and they break easily but you can see the size difference between the two and here's another comparison. This might be a lot easier to see because the other plant was pretty much broken up because it was too large. I brought over one of the back to Eden plants which is on your left hand side. And obviously the one on your right hand side is growing in the leaf mold. But that's a very good comparison between the two. And also I'd like to add is that I truly want this back to Eden method to work. Across my driveway again too, or the path that goes down the middle of my farm You can see another spot where the wood chip pile is way in the back there That I am starting another area so I do believe in it. I would not put that in we're going to be growing uh, Blackberries on the right hand side strawberries on the left hand side and when we're done picking that then we can probably plant melons in the middle and then have them the vines sprawl out against the wood chips there's a lot of reasons why but the main significant one I will show you at the end of the video so let's determine what the problem is the first step that we should always do when determining a problem with a plant is that you should pull it out of the ground and look at the root system so we're gonna dig this up Lots of little fine roots, so those are constantly regrowing all the time because of a problem. And down below over here too, you can see some earthworms. Now you can't see it so much on the camera, but the problem is here, it's very, very wet. The soil is extremely wet. And what I believe is happening, since there's a lot of fine roots, is simply is that the plant is drowning. The roots are not getting oxygen, it's stunting its growth, and it's not allowing it to grow. I seems to be that there's just way too much moisture in the wood chips. Okay, let's try another one next to it and see what those roots look like. Now again the same thing, lots of fine hair roots. In there, the soil is extremely wet and we haven't had rain in probably uh, four days and it should be drying out by now for sure. 
Again, I think the reason is that the wood chips are holding way too much water. Also too, I wanna to share this with you. When you dig down into your wood chips, and you get down a couple inches, and you see how moist they are, and if they're even decaying, this is not soil. This can never be soil. Even in the new Back to Eden uh, tour that he did this year, he does not call that soil. Paul does not call that soil. It's compost. It will always be compost. And that's what he's growing most of his stuff in. The soil is underneath it. Soil contains sand, silt, and clay and also has to have all the beneficial soil food web working in there to build aggregates to allow water to go in and air to come out. The best way that I can explain the difference between soil and compost, because wood chips is not soil, is in that will not it will slowly turn into a very small part of the soil, maybe 1% or 2%, and that takes a long time to do. The difference between soil and wood chips, wood chips decompose and will go away. They will turn into carbon dioxide and go back up in the atmosphere. It's organic matter. Soil just continues to build layers upon layers and it has some a little bit of organic matter in there. But what you're doing, you're also supplying the soil food web with air and water and aggregates. Wood chips will never build aggregates because it doesn't have that sand, silt, and clay in it. Even if you mix it in, it has to have mycorrhizal fungi to adapt to it and actually to hold on to everything and to separate it. All the back to Eden methods over the years, you're growing in not soil, you're growing in compost, which supplies a lots of nutrients to your plants and water, but it's not soil. So I wish to explain why it does not build soil. Wood chips does not build soil, only roots build soil. Just like you can see the squash plant here. The squash plant or the roots build soil. Plants build soil. For the simple fact it takes carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, feeds the soil biology, meaning the fungus and bacteria, then everything gets eaten and works up the chain. And then you have enriched soil because you have large aggregates, which the mycorrhizal fungi has opened up the soil, has kept it in place with glomalin or glomalin. I want to show you the problem that I found that the squash is not growing properly. In front of the squash I dug a larger hole into the wood chips and now you can see the soil at the bottom of that hole. And you can just tell by just looking at it that that soil is very compact and has no way of water really seeping into it very quickly. So what is happening to those roots, that again, they are drowning, they're not getting oxygen, they're dwarfing the plant because sometimes it's wet and stays wet for a longer period of time and those plants cannot be healthy sitting in water. And that's what the wood chips are doing. The wood chips are not allowing the areas to drain off very quickly when we get rain it will sit there because the soil is compact it's not the wood chips fault it's the soil underneath because it's not draining properly now how do we fix that that's what I it's important that plants build soil only roots of a plant you can't till that because if you do you're just going to till it all up and then it's going to fall right back down again and you're not solving the problem you solve it for maybe a week or two and then it's going to go right back to where it was within say a month now the situation is this how do we get that soil to get you know pores in it or start building aggregates the only way to do that is to grow a root in it and that root has to be strong enough to actually break up that hard pan or that clay soil so thick there that it can start working and draining the fluid off or the rain. And you can see here that it's hard soil and even when I squeeze on it that the water is just coming back up. The water will no way 
will uh, percolate through that or drain off. So when it rains, all the water is going to sit there like a pond, possibly to even go not aerobic but anaerobic, which is the bad part, causing problems or problems with diseases in the roots. So imagine this filled with water. Now you have all this water sitting there and your roots sitting in there in that wet water and not getting air. So then they slowly start to die or they just stay stunted and they don't do anything, thus causing problems for the plants. So how do we fix that? How do we get, let's say, a plant root in there? Obviously by planting some seed, but how do we get mycorrhizal fungi to get in there? That's why I started planting pine trees or you need something that's a more of a perennial grass or something else either in your back to Eden garden to make this soil here. This soil will never be built by just wood chips. You need a living root in the ground. You need mycorrhizal fungi to go in there. And you might be asking yourself right now, says, wait a minute, how can this happen this way? For a simple reason, it's the back to Eden methods working. We see it on camera and it's working great for Paul. How come it's not working for you? Or why is it falling apart? For the simple reason, Paul has apple trees in his orchard, which has grown mycorrhizal fungi into the soil, and that can travel up to miles on the ground. I do not have any apple trees here growing. That's why I try to plant a little, uh, some pine trees here every so often, which you can see and hopefully they will grow up and add that mycorrhizal fungi to the ground and to get that soil broken up so it can drain through. And also Paul, it's, his garden has been there for 30 plus years. This is the beginning part of it. This is the problem which you might have in the first year with this type of situation. Now eventually that soil will be broken up by the living root of the apple tree. And if there was a perfect example, how much roots are in his ground is for the simple reason, I believe it wasn't an apple tree, but it was some type of other tree, like a pear or a peach or something else too. And he had a gentleman show that it basically grew 30 feet away from the tree and a sucker was coming up from that tree. That root traveled 30 feet in those wood chips or compost, not in the ground because it had also, de you know, decomposed. And it's an uh, fungi or mycorrhizal fungi is also coming off that apple tree root or peach tree or palm tree and it's breaking up that soil underneath so he does not have a drainage problem. So why am I not having the same problem in the leaf mold than I have in the wood chips? I also have compact soil underneath too. But with the leaves, what the leaves do, since they're a lot more surface area and a lot more fluffier, they dry out the soil a lot quicker. And they absorb all that water and bring it to the top and dissipate it so the plant does not drown in that soil like it does with the wood chips. The wood chips have a tendency to hold on to that moisture way too much. I also want to show you another example of the leaf mold for a simple reason is that if you look at the squash plant and what I started digging on the side here is that the leaves decompose quick enough that it holds moisture in but not too much towards the surface. And you can see this white root from the squash plant growing probably at least four to five feet away from the plant inside that leaf mold just underneath the surface. So it's not drowning like it is in the wood chips. The wood chips have, in their first maybe two or three years, have too much of an air gap inside the uh, wood chip area. Uh, it's great to keep the weeds down and some moisture in, but also too, there's too much of an air gap. And what happens is that the stuff on the bottom will sit there and drown and the upper part will be too dry. So the roots will dry out. And in this case, the leaf mold is allowing that root to grow all along the, uh, just underneath the surface and staying moist and healthy and getting plenty of air and plenty of water at the same time, proportionally wise. I finally found the end of the root and I broke off the very tip of it, but you can see how long that root is away from that plant. And this is just one root, so I'm hoping there's probably like four or five more that goes the length of the distance in the ground. And you can see here, I'm gonna to try to get a close up for you, is that root is doing so well in that leaf mold compared to growing in the wood chips.
if you're having great success with your back to Eden garden, there might be a reason why also too that it's working very well for you. Is that simply this problem could be solved very easily if that if it's on a hill or a slope. Just like water runs off of a roof, thus the water will run out through the wood chips, retain some moisture in it, and then go down on a slope and then run out instead of just sitting there on that hard pan of soil and then drowning the roots. That might be another reason why you're having a good success with your garden. This garden or test area is very large. Again, it's 50 feet by 300. So it's on also a flat plain here. So I'm not getting the drainage off like it would be on a hillside or a slope. Over here that we're looking at now is some more of the uh, zucchini plants that are suffering. But I also want to show a point that it can be solved even in a flat area is that simply your first couple of years what you should do and you can see here they have a beautiful row of peppers that are doing fantastic why are they doing fantastic because what i did is that it's hard to see but i raise the uh, soil level above the wood chips then add the wood chips back on so the roots are not sitting in water because of that hard pan underneath or that compact soil so those plants are doing extremely well and that's one way of curing the problem maybe your first two or three years until those wood chips decompose is that you're putting them in a raised bed just like you see everybody building a raised bed this is a raised bed without any uh, borders or sides to it for a simple reason it's doing very well it's getting the proper drainage and you can see how healthy and lush those plants are again in just wood chips and a little bit of soil so there's no problem with diseases in the soil that's affecting roots or nothing else either I have some of the soil food web working the the wood chips are decomposing a little bit to feed nutrients to the plants until that soil food web can get up to working 100%. So what I'm also going to do now to fix this side is I'm going to rip out all these plants and I'm going to see if I can plant um, not in the soil itself because that's pretty deep and I don't want the roots to rot but I want to plant as many sunflowers as I can and I believe the sunflower seeds will do very good and I'll keep you updated on that to show you all the sunflowers that might be coming up in this area thus going down and putting roots into that soil and breaking it up and I'll show you all the sunflowers that are growing in the leaf mold here you can see how beautiful all those sunflowers are doing in the leaf mold uh, growing amongst the squash and zucchini and cucumbers and everything else too and these are the edible variety of seeds and they're doing very nicely and I should be able to harvest them probably within a couple of weeks depending on the weather they're just gorgeous I also want to show you this this is field number three this is where I have my tomato plants growing this is just one row of tomatoes growing on a cattle panels you can't see the cattle panels anymore and this is just, uh, the variety is called Big Beef, and it's just growing in leaf mold on top of the ground, because I do have that compact soil up here too. And this is, it's not a hedge, <laughs> it's, it's all tomato plants. And I have been doing this for several years, and they just take off because, again, they'll throw out roots and probably to the very edge of those leaves uh, and bring all those nutrients back to the plant, and they love it. And they just take off growing purely in leaf mold. But I want to show you examples of this also, too, that the leaf mold does wonders in a lot of other things, too. But we're going to get those wood chips working, I promise you. The reason why it's very important to me for the back to Eden method to work is a very personal one. For the simple reason is about 15 years ago, my beautiful wife passed away from a rare incurable cancer. And I have been raising my two boys on my own. They were only six and four at the time. And my youngest son who's standing next to me now, who's 19 years old, was born with Down syndrome, had open heart surgery at the age of three months. And about a year later, after my wife passed away, he became autistic and he reduced speaking and now he doesn't speak at all. And he's 24 seven hour care. So I wish to have him as much as possible helping me outside when he's home, uh, not, not in school. And my other son will be going into the military soon. So I want this back to the method to work 100%. 
I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe. Come on, buddy. Let's go inside and get a nice drink of water. It's getting too hot out here.